Hey guys, what's going on? It's Counterspell Hater here, back with another EDH video. Uh, today we're look, we're taking a look at Bolo Guide to Monsters. So what is this? Well, for two generic, a green and a blue, we have a legendary creature, you can wizard, and two. Whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you could pull or a creature card in your graveyard, copy that spell, you copy of a creature spell becomes a token, by the way. So this deck is value-based in some ways. Uh, one thing I should mention, do not ever put a single changeling card in here. Otherwise, it will ruin the entire strategy because then you will have a card that is every creature type, therefore ruining the Bolo Guides Monsters trigger. And make sure not to have too many creature types on like one creature. So like elements of incarnations, so like try, try and cut it down. Anyway, so we're gonna get into like more value-based cards, and then like at the very end, we have like three cards meant more for combat, like finishing off the game. So, anyways, let's get into it. Starting with Slither Muse. So for two generic double blue, it's a creature elemental three three. Uh, when it leaves play, uh, if that Choose an opponent. If that player has more cards in hand than you, draw cards equal to difference. Evoke cost of three generic and a blue. You may play a spell for its evoke cost. If you do, it's sacrifice when it comes into place. Here's the thing. Uh, if Bolo's to create a copy of this, then that means you still get a Slither Muse and you still get the cards because the original is sacrificed when it comes into play if you're using the evoke cost. But then the token comes in and it stays there because you did not pay an evoke cost to cast it in the first place. So that explains that, in case you're wondering. Patchwork Crawler, definitely uh, a creature you should have in here because for one generic and a blue, it's a creature zombie horror. Uh, two generic and a blue, exile target creature card from your grid grab and pay plus and plus count on Patchwork Crawler. Patchwork Crawler has all activated abilities of all creature cards, exile with it. So you'll be able to get rid of creatures in your graveyard, which is what you want, because you don't want creatures in your graveyard, because then Volo, when Volo checks, you may find like a creature that shares a creature type with the creature spell that you cast. Patchwork Crawler can solve that problem. And though it is a zombie horror, and it gets all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with it. It's pretty nice. In case there are any. Uh, endurance, one generic double green creature elemental incarnation, three, four, flash reach. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, that's one player player puts all the cards from their graveyard on the bottom of their library in random order. Evoke, exile a green card from your hand. So you can evoke this out and get two uh, endurance creatures. Uh, one that's the copy, one that's the original. If you don't have an elemental or an incarnation under your control or in your graveyard, but if you manage to copy this, or if you don't, it's still pretty good because then you give it all like cards, creature cards specifically in from your graveyard into the bottom of your library. Which then, when Volo checks, there's less chances that he finds like uh, creatures in your graveyard that can share creature types with a creature spell you've cast, although you still have to worry about like on the battlefield. Still though, pretty good card. This can also ruin like black plans, like mono black plans, like graveyard associated plans. So all in all, nice card. Quicksilver Gargantuan, uh, five generic, double blue, creature shapeshifter, seven, seven. Uh, as battlefield, when it enters the battlefield, well, actually, no, it's may, it's, you may have Quicksilver Gargantuan enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's a 7 7. It's still 7 7, I should say. The card says. Uh, so this is really busted because this can be any creature on the battlefield. And if there are no shapeshifters on the battlefield under your control or in your graveyard and then Bolo copies this and you can get like two of whatever creature you want. So like you could have like a 
a crater hoof behemoth, and like a Colonian Hydra, which would be insane. Uh, or you could have like a hollow hinge overlord, for example. Another good one. Uh, four generic double green creature wolf, four four flash at the beginning of your upkeep. Uh, for each creature control, that's a wolf of rare or a werewolf. Create a 2 2 green wolf creature token. So, this, because you're going to be, if you make two of these, this can make a lot of wolves fast. Clever impersonator, two generic double blue creature shapes into a zero zero. You may have it in the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. This means that when you cast this, if you control no shape shifters and blows, blows is on your battlefield and you have no shape shifters in your graveyard, this means you can get two of whatever non-land permanent may be on the battlefield, meaning that you could get a... Uh, your sundial you could get an azores gateway which can then actually would that transform or does it exile itself i completely forgot and i believe it untaps and then it transforms but anyways you can get that possibly you could get you can get a lot of busted things and not just creatures so this is a completely broken card Light Seal Colossus, at this point, this should probably be put more in the category of just ending the game because for 12 generic, you have an artifact creature golem, 11 11 trample, in fact, indestructible. If it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, by the way, you reveal Light Seal Colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So if you would be forced to discard this thing, instead of it going into your graveyard and counting as a creature type, it can then go back into your library. So pretty nice. Exodron, this is another completely broken card because uh, three generic and double blue for your illusion. Uh, when it enters, as it enters the battlefield, turn all other non token creatures face down. So Volo will go face down, but you can still look at them and they're two two creatures. And Exodron's power and toughness are each equal to the number of face down creatures on the battlefield. So Thing is, is if you don't have a lot of tokens and you just play Exodron regularly and you just don't have Volo out yet and then you play Volo, then what can happen is, is that like now, like most creature types on your battlefield, like they're not there anymore. And all you have to worry about is your graveyard, meaning that you can start copying stuff. Not to mention if you're playing Morse, which I don't know how that would work, which would be interesting to look into with Bolo. But still, definitely a, a card to consider, considering it turns the, your creatures face down, then they lose their creature types because they're just two two creatures without a creature type to be specific about. Mold Drifter, or generic and a blue, Journal, creature elemental, flying two two. When it enters the battlefield, you draw two cards, the vote costs of two. We don't know how that works. In global we'll five, then seven generic, double blue, artifact creature, we'll five, then seven eleven. Ah, like the. Uh, uh, no. Guess it. Anyways, I would walk trample trout. So, all in all, pretty good. You can target this with other abilities, or like this cannot be targeted in general. Like, you're putting. With like things from you, your side of the but also your opponents can't touch it, which is a problem for them because if they have an island that's like 14 damage they can cut in. Deep Forest Hermit, green generic, double green, creature elf druid, vanishing three. This creature enters the battlefield with three time counters on. At the beginning of the upkeep, remove the time counter from it. For the last one, remove, sacrifice it. Uh, but when the, Deep Forest, forest Hermit enters the battle to create four 1 1 green squirrel creature tokens. Squirrels you control get plus one plus one, meaning that you create two of these that's two creatures that die within three turns. Um, three of your turns. But until then, you get like 
eight one ones that turn into three threes. So that's 24 power and toughness you've just put on to Valkyrie with this alone. Thank you, Bolo. Broken, but only temporary. Uh, Merchmean Liege, two generic and triple hybrid, hybrid green blue. Uh, creature horror, four four other green creatures you control get plus one plus one. Other blue creatures you control get plus one plus one. Untap all green and or blue creatures you control during each other player's untapped step. So this happens twice because you then have two if you copy this. And all green creatures are getting plus two plus two, and all blue creatures are getting plus two plus two. It means you have a multicolored creature. So like a blue, green blue creature, those creatures would be getting plus four plus four. Yes. Yeah. Except for, of course, marking these because it says others. So then like the two copies affect them themselves, not like themselves, but like one another. So then they would just get plus two, plus two for the others. Anyways, you get it. You get the point. Ava Brock, Caretaker, which transforms into Hollow Henge Master, Hunt Master. So on this side, it's a creature human werewolf for four generic and double green. Uh, Hexproof, beginning of combat on your turn. Uh, put two plus plus counters on another target creature you control. And it has hexproof, it's a 4 4. Day bound, if a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes night next turn. And then hexproof, 6 6. Other perks you control have hexproof. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus plus counters on each creature you control. Night bound, if a player casts at least two spells during their own turn, it becomes day next turn. So what happens then is, is this like, this is like double protection because tokens that are copies. Not to mention the hollow henge hunt master side would then be terrifying because during night, uh, for as long as hollow, hunt, hollow henge hunt master is around, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two counters on each creature you control. Since you would have to do these things to Bolo, uh, if you don't have the human werewolf in your graveyard or, un or under your control, then that would suddenly be four plus one plus one counters on being put on all creatures you control uh, at the game of combat on your turn, which would be insane. Verderous Gear Hulk, three generic, double green, artifact creature construct for four trample. When enters the battlefield, distribute four plus counters among creatures, among any number of creatures, authority creatures you control. And you can do this twice in Bolo. Master of Waves, three generic and a blue. Creature of Wizard to one. Protection from red, so red cannot touch this at all whatsoever. Elemental creatures you control get plus one plus one because you have two of these are going to be getting plus two plus two. And when Master of Waves enters the battlefield, play a number of one one, I mean one zero oh, blue creature. Blue elemental creature tokens on the battlefield equal to your devotion to blue. Each blue symbol in the mana cost of uh, permanent control counts towards your devotion to blue. So say you cast this and you have like a permanent with like four uh, blue mana symbols. So then Volo copies this and then suddenly you have six devotion. So you put six, but because of Volo making another copy, that suddenly turned into 12. Uh, one zero elemental creatures that are getting buffed by both master of ways with the which then would make them uh three twos which would be insane subtle subtlety i think i pronounced that right i'm uncertain uh two generic double blue creature elemental incarnation three evoke cost of exiling a blue card from your hand and then flash and flying. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose up to one target creature or planeswalker spell, its owner puts it on the bottom, on the top or bottom of their library. So pretty nice. 
Because then what happens is, is that actually essentially you can cast this infinite times due to the fact that you're creating a copy of subtlety. Well, actually, no, because then they're only about to. Never mind. I carry on with Cultivator Colossus. Or generic triple green creature plant beast trample. Uh, its power toughness are each equal to the number uh, to, of lands you control. And then whenever it's about to be, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tab. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. Just make sure you don't draw yourself out. Mind, mind you, you are you could be getting two of these things. So that's a great opportunity to ramp bonk out of control and draw a lot of cards. Cemetery Prowler, uh, one generic, double green, creature wolf vigilance, three, four. When it attacks or enters the battlefield, exile a card from your graveyard. Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each, for each card type they share with cards exiled with Cemetery Prowler. So you're getting two of these, meaning that creature spells alone are going to start casting, costing two less to cast, two generic less to cast. If their artifact creatures are like enchanting creatures, then, well, you know, they are going to cost like four less to cast. Which can be insane. Well, actually, four for just like one cemetery problem. Hold on. Let me rethink. Yeah, four. Right. Worm. Uh, six generic and a green to worm. Reach trample seven six. When it's about to gain five life, and then for two generic and a green, you can exile it from the graveyard to gain five more. Bow Razor Regent, big value here. Five generic, double green, creature dragon, four five, flying. When Bow Razor Regent enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creature you don't control. Whenever a creature you control fights, uh, put two plus and plus counters on it at the beginning of the next hand step. So what happens here is because you create two uh, Bow Razor Regents, they both fight a creature. So then both of them get four plus one plus one counters thanks to each other if they survive and suddenly you untap like next time probably with like an eight two eight nine so like 16 power and 18 toughness in the air mind you and this is whenever a creature fights. So if you have multiple creatures on your battlefield that are just continuously fighting, they're going to get buffed quick. Loyal Guardian. Four generic and a green. Trimble. Uh, Rhino. Four four. Lieutenant. The beginning of combat on your turn. You control your commander. Put a possible counter on each creature you control. So that becomes two. Becomes two Loyal Guardians. Sinks of Bolo. Uh, Sinks of the Second Sun. Six generic double blue for a creature swing six six flying absolutely forked because at the beginning of your post combat main phase you get an additional beginning phase after this phase meaning that you get the beginning phase which includes the untap the upkeep and draw steps but then that also means because you have two of these you're getting two beginning phases, which is two untaps, two un two upkeeps, and two draw steps, which quickly becomes broken. Because then that includes untapping your land and like drawing two cards, not to mention upkeep triggers and all that. It's broken. Hole breaker horror. Five generic and double blue creature Kraken horror. Seven eight. Flash. This spell can be countered, so first of all, big problem for your opponents. Whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one. Return target spell you don't control to its owner's hand. So this is forked in that way. Or you can return target not land permanent to its owner's hand, meaning you can send creatures you control back to your hand or like creature tokens, so they poof. And then uh, the real deal so then you can just keep on doing that over and over again, which is still broken. Mercurial Pretender, I think that's how I pronounce it. 
Uh, four generic, double, not double blue, just one blue. Creature shapeshifter, zero, zero. You may have that enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control, except it gains two generic and double blue. Uh, return this creature to its owner's hand. So this is very broken. Because if you have, because, so what happens here is like, you get that token, right? And then as about build, make sure it isn't a shapeshifter. And then this as about field, make sure that it also isn't a shapeshifter. Right. Well, actually, this one, the make sure that the token of Mir Miracle Pretender as the battlefield has a copy of a non-shapeshifter creature. Then have this as whatever you want. Then you can return this to your hand, cast it. And because, and as long as you don't have any other shapeshifters uh, in your graveyard or on the battlefield, technically, because Miracle Pretender loses this shapeshifter and becomes like something else, like whatever you want it to, then you could have like not infinite value, but like crazy value because you're creating different tokens each time that enter the battlefield is different copies of creatures. So that can still be completely broken. Thunderfoot Ballast. Uh, this is probably more combat. Four generic double green trample by five, five lieutenant. As long as you control your commander, Thunderfoot Ballast gets plus two, plus two, and other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and have trample. So since you have two of them, uh, those are two seven seven to trample. As long as you control your commander and all other and other creatures you control. So then, because there are the two other creatures, so actually that's nine nines with trample. And the rest of your board uh, is getting plus four, plus four, and getting twice trample, which doesn't matter because trample matters only once. Uh, Twitting staff to be even more broken. Very generic. Matter of fact, if you would copy a spell one or more times, instead copy it that many times plus an additional time you may choose new targets with the cop for the additional copy. Since you're copying the creature spell, this does work. And seven, for seven generic, you can tap a copy target and start social your spell you control it. You may choose new targets with the copy. That doesn't really matter, but what matters is this is gonna allow us to create more tokens. Deep Sea Kraken, seven generic, triple blue, Future Kraken, 6-6. Six, six. It's unblockable. Suspend of 9 uh, for a cost of 2 generic and blue. So for 2 generic and blue, I believe you exile this card from your hand. They put 9 time counters on it. Yeah. And then whenever an opponent plays a spell, if Deep Sea Kraken is suspended, remove time counter from it. So what can happen here is if you do not have any creatures that are Krakens in your graveyard or under your control and you have follow outs, uh, you can get this out early. So what happens when like all time counters are removed, you cast it without paying its mana cost, I think. In which case you do, you then get for probably pretty cheap, uh, two six sixes that are unblockable, so that can be completely work if uh, suspend is what I think it is. If not, and like puts it on the battlefield, you know, while well, I messed up. Uh, still, you could catch it for the 10, uh, just like kind of protect here, which you won't be. Because for 10 generic in the green, it's a 10 10, but it costs one less to cast for each creature your opponent's control. And it enters the battlefield, and when it enters the battlefield, you put a plus and plus counter on each other creature you control. So then that's a counter each uh, for the both of the primeval protectors. And, and then that's for the rest of your other creatures. That's two pulse of books counters. And this costs one less to cast for each creature of one control. So still very broken. And that's like combined. So that could be a pretty cheap like way to buff you more. Uh, Elder Dargaroth, pretty generic. Double green creature beast, 6-6 six, six, vigilance, reach, trample. When I attack to blocks, choose one. Create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. You gain three life, or you can draw a card. 
But because you have two and they're able to attack and block if they survive, you can choose to do all of those and one of those addi an additional time. Because you attack with two Elder Gagaros, and then you block with two Elder Gagaros. So that's like four Elder Gagaros and triggers the toll, which can be like four three threes, 12 life you gain back, or like four cards. Like the choice is yours. Pull Breacher. Yes, I am playing this card, even though it's like dirty and absolutely broken and it's been banned. Still, though. <coughs> Too generic and a blue creature, Murpho Pirate, Free 2, Flash. If an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead you create a treasure token. But because you have two whole creatures, that ends up being two treasure tokens. And then we have Palin. Palincon, I think. Five generic, double blue, summon illusion. So this is a creature illusion. Fine for five. When it comes into play, you untap up to seven lands. And then for two generic and double blue, uh, you can return it to its own hand. So what happens here is you end up untapping 14 lands because you get two, as long as you don't have illusions, mind you, in your graveyard or on your battlefield. And then what you can do is... Uh, since you have 14, you can lend them taps. Eight, so then seven, so 15. If you manage to sacrifice the token uh, of Alan Khan, then what you can do is generate infinite mana. If you have 14 untapped lands, right? So then what you simply do is return it to the donor's hand. Then you cast it, and also don't forget to, so you tap all your lands, right? You got 14 mana with their basics. And then you use four of that mana to return Alan Kron to his owner's hand. And then you use seven mana in total to recast Alan Kron. And you have three left, so then you keep doing that, and that's infinite mana. There you go. As long as you're able to sacrifice uh, Palancron or generate uh, more than 15 minutes, because in which case you want, uh, then you can't. But moving on, Apex Devastator, eight generic, uh, double green creature, Chimera Hydro 1010, Cascade, 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 and Cascade. When you cast a spell, now I know that the problem is that the cast trigger won't go on won't uh, go off for the copy because it's not being cast, right? Or is it? Whenever you cast a creature spell that you copy that spell. No. So it's a little, yeah. So where, am, where was I? Ah, here we go. So even though you don't get the four more cascades, you still get another 10-10. Not to mention this one is getting you those four cascades. So cascade, if you don't know what it is, I'll read it to you. Uh, whenever, when you cast a spell, exile cards on the top of your library until you exile a non-line card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its man cost, put the exile cards on the bottom of your library in a random order, multiple instances of cascade trigger each of Cascade each year separately. So you can get uh, up to, you can cast up to four creature spells that cost nine or less in total. And they can be copied too, along with the two 10 tens you're getting, which is why Apex never stay, even though you don't get as much from like the cop from, like, from this as you would like some other cards, maybe. Um, Actually, you probably wouldn't get any more than this because, like, that's insane. Like, that's five spells, that's two ten tens, and a lot more coming. Like, 
trionic, trionic resonator, uh, two generic artifact, two, two, two generic to get to tab it and copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So a triggered ability uses the words when, whenever, or as. So you can copy uh, Volo's ability when you cast a creature spell. So then you can get another token, which is just absolutely bored. Next blue main chance. Uh, four generic triple green enchantment creature elemental trample. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead by five trample. So a good example, I guess, here is if you don't have any elementals on the battlefield or in your graveyard and you have Volo out and then you cast this and you use Trionic Resonator, which by the way, you'd have to have nine mana to do that, then you're getting not two, but three tokens that are copies of Nyx Bloom Ancients, which then means your lands alone tap for 27 times as much mana as what they normally would. And also, in case you didn't know, in case you haven't watched the Command Zone podcast, which goes with the guide to them, uh, they revealed that Alencron and Nickel Mansion are an infinite combo in themselves because you play Palancron, you untap seven lands, and because next room inch, you need next room inch and out, uh, you you won't be casting this. You won't be using Mitch lands. You could use literally like only three on this, as long as you have the blue, and play this, and then you untap out to seven, tap all of them, all seven of those lands. You got twenty one mana. You use four of that to return Palancon to your hand, and then you just repeat the process, and then boom, you got infinite mana as long as you just have those lands. Well, all in all, pretty nice. Uh, Nessian Wild Ravager. Four generic double green creature Hydra. Tribute six as this creature is battlefield. An opponent of your choice may place six possible counters on it. This is six six. And if it's Enters the battlefield and its tribute cost isn't paid, it fights another creature. Uh, each deals with damage equal to its power to the other. So you can get two 12 12s, you can get 12 12 and a creature that fights, and it's 6 6 that fights uh, another one of your opponent's creatures. Or you can get two 6 6s that fight two of your opponent's creatures and probably take them out. By the way, the possibilities are very scary. Uh, for Frost Titan, uh, four generic, double blue, creature giant, six, six, uh, when, whenever Frost Titan becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays two generic, and whenever it, it enters the battlefield or attacks, tap target permanent, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap turn, you've got two of these, so, and that doesn't say non-land, so you can start tapping down your opponent's lands. And if you use Trionic Resonator, suddenly your opponents are like down three lands, which is very scary. And if you have more of these, good luck opponent. <coughs> Sorry. This is a season to be coughing. Uh, five generic in the blue. Your Kraken, uh, spawning Kraken, I should say. 6-6. Six, six. Whenever a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, or Sherman you control deals on a damage to your player, create a 9-9 nine, nine blue Kraken creature. So you've got two of these. So whenever one of those featured creatures deal damage, instead of creating one 9-9, nine, nine, you're creating two. So that's insane. Uh, impervious Great Worm, seven generic Triple green, creature worm, 16-16. Uh, convoke, your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one generic or one mana of that creature's color, indestructible. And you, if you copy this, that's two 16, 16 creatures. So that's 32 power toughness you've added to the battlefield with indestructible that you didn't use any lands to pay for at all. 
for at all and can also uh, end up being cast on like turn five or something. So yeah, absolutely insane. Cultivator of Blades, three generic, double green, creature elf artificer, found creative of two, one, one. Whenever this creature enters the battlefield, put two pulls of counters on it, or create two, one, one, color civil artifact tokens. So you could have a three, three, and then a one, one, and two, one, ones. You could have two, one, one. You could have like six, one, ones. Or you could have two, three, threes. Choice is yours. Uh, but whenever a cultivator of blades attacks, you may have other attacking creatures get plus X, plus X until it turn Rex's cultivator of blades power. So creatures you control could possibly get up. Uh, Gets plus six, plus six uh, until end of turn, or like, and like both with cultivated blade sale, the game plus three, plus three, but other creatures can get plus six, plus six, or higher, depending if, on whether or not cultivator of blade's power increases. Sagashima of a thousand faces. Oh boy. Three generic in blue. Legendary creature, human rogue, three one. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature, except it has Sakashima of a thousand faces of other abilities. The legend rule doesn't apply to burns you can control. Oh boy. So what happens here is that you can have two more uh uh, actually, no, this would not work because Bolo's a human. But still, that's another Bolo, which is scary enough, which is just absolutely scary. Because then that's like another tote trigger that can copy your creatures when you cast them. So, say, like, Tiny Evil Titan, for instance, uh, for four genetic and double green. It's a creature of giant, 6-6, six, six, and trample. And when it enters the field or attacks, you may search your library for up to two basic land cards for the monster battle tap. You sold your library. So, like, if we had, like, a sock of Sheena out, and then we had a, as a copy of Bolo, that'd be two Bolo triggers, making what could possibly be three primeval titans. So that's uh, six, is that, no, three Six six trampling creatures that when they are in the or attack in total you get six lands up to six lands. Uh, but playing cards, by the way, so that doesn't have to be basic. I just know. Kudama of the East Tree, another absolutely broken card that you probably saw the sooner the flowers and basic. Fortuner, double green, legendary creature, spirit, reach, 6-6. Six, six. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, uh, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted man cost from your hand onto the battlefield. So this counts for lands because lands technically cost zero and they are still permanent, even though they're not spells. Uh, but also, this can help you get out creatures that you don't want to copy or you just like don't want to cast because like you have creatures that share a creature type with that creature that you would have cast on the mouth of in your graveyard and you're not able to get rid of them. The Kadama of these three, another broken card. That goes greatly in combination with a Avengers of Center card because for five generic and double green, you have to choose your own mental five five. Uh, when Avenger is in the card, and is about to uh, put a zero one green land creature token onto the for each land you control. Landfall, when a red land is about to enter your control, you may put a pulse of power on each land creature you control. And since even though it looks like an element, but it's a spirit, uh, so. You were getting twice as many like Avengers, Avengers of Zendikar triggers, if you call them, uh, thanks to uh, Rolo. 
So that means instead of one pulsing pulsing pound being put on each plant you control, instead of two are getting put on each plant you control whenever a land is dropped under your control. So that's pretty bored. Next we have Bulbars. 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 Hunt Master. I do not know. Uh, I forgot how to pronounce his name. And then slash Bulbars Pack Leader. So for four generic, double green, six. It's a six, six. Yeah. The day side. Creature, uh, human werewolf. Uh, when it's about to create two, 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 green. Wolf creature children, so there's two of them, so then that becomes four to choose. Uh, day bound, bound, so that, uh, so again, don't cast anything if the player doesn't cast anything on their own turn. Uh, then it becomes night next turn, and total large mag leader. Uh, when it's about to field four attacks, create two. Two, two green wolf creature tokens, and then for two genetic and double green, another part of wolf or world you control, fight for creature you don't control, and night bound. So if, you, if a player has at least two more creature, I mean spells in general, uh, on their own turn, it becomes day next turn. It's pretty nice. Night pack ambusher to kind of go in combination with like the day bond bound. So because for two generic, double green, creature wolf. Slash for four, uh, other wolves and werewolves control get also plus one because you may copy this. That's suddenly plus two plus two to other werewolf wolves and werewolves. So like, but night both night pack ambushers are now getting like just plus one plus one from each other. But other werewolves and wolves to control other than that are getting plus two plus two now. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't cast the spell this turn, create two green wolf creatures children. So if you don't cast anything and you have this up, uh, this transforms and then this starts creating new tokens. <coughs> and now we finally get into, okay, sorry, four. I, mean, I said three at the beginning. Four, the four uh, creatures that you can copy to like end the game. So first off, Trader Host, Behemoth, five generic, triple green, beast, haste. By five, uh, when I was about field, could you control, gain trample, and get plus X, plus X, and so on in the turn. All right, she's not in creature control. And that's happening twice. Bigger, three generic, triple green, elemental incarnation, creature, trample, six, six. The damage will be dealt to another creature control. Prevent that damage, put a pulse pulse counter on that creature. Reach one damage, prevent this way. So two figures now affect themselves. But now creatures are twice as affected other than them. So I say a creature I had was to be dealt five damage. Well, I had two figures out, so now it's gonna get normally we get five plus of pounds. Whoops, because I had, I only have one, but now it's getting ten. Ten plus pounds. I think that's how it works. Yes. Whenever Vigor is put into graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. So this also comes back. Polani and Hydra, three generic, double green, to Hydra, zero zero trample. When it has and it has up with four plus six counters on it. And when it attacks, double number of plus six counters on each creature you control. So Polani and Hydra, uh, since you have two of these. You're now quadrupling the number of pulses of kinds of each group of control, including the cloning hydras themselves. So Earth, and then Earthshaker Giant finally sent it all off at, with the non-land cards. Uh, Earthshaker Giant, four generic, double green, creature giant druid, six six, trample. When it enters battlefield, other creatures control, get plus three, plus three, and gain trample until in turn. So the two Earthshaker Giants are affecting themselves. So they're getting plus three, plus three, and trample until their turn, although they are summoning sick. Uh, so 
But other than that, all your other creatures are getting plus six, plus six, and trample. So that's the end of the non-line cards. And then we have Moss Warp Bridge to begin our non-basic uh, lands. So it has Hideaway. Uh, it enters battlefield tapped. And when it does, you look at the top four cards in your library, you exile one of them face down, and then you put the rest on the bottom of your library. And then you can tap and add a green magic manifold. Or for green, you can tap it. And if you have, and you can only activate this ability if you have uh, creatures with total power, 10 or greater. And then when you, what happens is you cast the, the exiled card that was face down uh, without paying its mana cost. So pretty cool. Uh, Guy's Cradle, that's to add a green to your mana pool, three to you control, it's a kind of lot, it's going to be great. Castle Garen Break, uh, land, answer off the tap, unless you control a force, and you can tap it to add a green, and then for four, no, for four in total, two generic and double green, you can tap it, and add six green mana to your mana pool to only be used on creature spells you cast or activate the abilities of creature you control. So, it'd be nice. We're in the other game. Myriad Landscape. As the outfield tapped, uh, you can tap to add a colors. Or, for two generic, you can tap and sacrifice it. And you search library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type. Put the monster up for tap. And you shuffle the library. If we have Blinded Woodland, which is that. It's had three, but it doesn't have about to tap, and you have to pay four totals for two generic in the green. You tap it and sacrifice blinded woodland. Uh, search the library for the two basic land cards and put them on to the tap. Library, <coughs> Arch of Roska, uh, land ascend. If you control 10 or more permits, which we will, by the way, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. You can tap to add a color to your mana pool or five generic. You can tap it and draw a card, but you can only activate that, that ability unless you control the uh, city you're supposed to use. If you have the city you're supposed to use. Then we have Homeward Path. You know, you may be questioning this. Man, tap, add color to your mana pool. Uh, tap, each player gains control of all creatures he or she owns. So why do you have this one? Well, your opponents could be playing control magic and you might want your creatures back. And they might just gain control of your whole board all of a sudden with like an Ashiach or something. Or what could be really sneaky is if your player if is if your opponent plays like a rise of the dark realms. What happens then is you can tap this and everyone gets their board state back mostly. So that's insane. Uh, but you know, isolated watchtower land. You can tap it to add a colors, and then for two generic, you can tap it, scrub one. Then you may reveal the top card of your library if it's a land card. Uh, then you may uh, put it on to battlefield tapped, and act in, but you can only activate this ability if I'm going to control at least two more lands. In you. They probably won't because you're running green and green is not from repping land wise. But in case you don't, and this is also an extra scry, so it has those purposes. And then you have uh, 21 basic forests and 21 basic islands. Uh, that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this EDH guide. Please like and subscribe. Uh, share this video with others. Don't forget to hit the notification bell uh, so you don't miss on content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.